Cherry is red, but ebony's harder. Microjig, maker of the gripper. Work safer, work smarter. Hey everybody, before we get started, I wanted to remind you to download my free guide to setting up a woodworking shop without a lot of money over at theweekendwoodworker.com. And you'll be the first to know when my new woodworking course launches this fall. This week's project is kind of a self-indulgent one. I needed a way to display my running medals. I've been running a lot of half marathons. My goal is to run seven this year. And every time you complete one of these 13 mile races, they give you one of these medals. So while these hardly compare to real awards like military achievements or Olympic medals, each one of these represents a goal that I worked really hard to achieve. I'm gonna use alder for this project. I've never used alder before, but it was really inexpensive at my local Home Depot. I got this one by two by eight foot board for a little over $12. Cutting out the notches in the side pieces is definitely gonna be the trickiest part of this project. So I'll start with those and I'll start by installing my dado stack into my table saw. It's safe to use my rip fence as a stop block when cutting these dados because they don't cut all the way through the wood. Over here on my router, I'll cut out a notch on the back of each piece to hold in that top panel. I need the other side to mirror the first side, so I need to start the cut in the middle and work my way to the end. That's a lot safer to run it that way rather than trying to hold the board tight and running it left to right, which could cause it to shoot out that way. I'll connect this top piece and the two side pieces with half lap joints. I need to cut a couple of notches in this piece that'll slide down into that top notch of the side pieces. With my regular blade back in place, I can bevel the ends of this board. I'm gonna sand all three of these pieces now because once they're assembled, it's gonna be hard to get in there with some sandpaper. One of the nice things about lap joints is that they're self-squaring, so all I gotta do is glue these pieces together. All right, while that's drying, I can cut out the cross pieces. And I'll bevel the ends of these 45 degrees too. Well, it was after I sanded all four of these that I realized I cut these bevels the wrong direction. So I designed this so the ends of all of these pieces would bevel up like this top one. So it should go that way. Just imagine, you'll get the same level of skilled craftsmanship in my upcoming course, The Weekend Woodworker. I was playing around with it and dropped this in this way, and I think that looks okay. Trust me, it'll, it'll look great, and nobody needs to know except us. Well, the lesson here is clear. Just embrace your mistakes and make them look intentional. I'll use spray adhesive to attach my cutting template with the letters to a piece of plywood. It's always fun when I get a chance to use my antique scroll saw. If you would like to see more of my scroll saw projects, I've compiled a playlist. Check down in the description. I just realized that there are so many straight lines on these letters that I can probably cut most of them out quicker on my band saw. You know, it would probably be more inspirational if I painted these gold, but silver is the only spray paint I had in the shop, and I don't feel that inspired to make a special trip to the hardware store. 
I'm gonna use weld bond to glue these letters into place. It works really well to glue things to painted surfaces and it dries clear. So if I'm a little bit sloppy, it shouldn't make any difference. I'm just kind of eyeballing these letters to get them straight. And once they look good, I'll glue them in place. I just thought of something. I should have used my CNC machine to cut out these letters. That glue dries pretty quickly, so now all I need to do is glue this into those little rabbits that I cut on the router. This board is gonna be the cleat for hanging the display on the wall. If you're not familiar with this system, these are called French cleats and it makes hanging things on the walls a breeze. So each piece has a 45 degree bevel in it. So this cleat will get glued onto the back of my frame and then this cleat, I'll screw it into the wall and then the whole display will just drop down onto it like that. And finally, I'll cap it off with this piece. And I'll finish this off with, you guessed it, a few coats of spray lacquer. By the way, I really think I'm a fan of Alder now. It's hard, it cuts well, and I can't help but notice how similar it looks to oak. So check this out for comparison. Here's an unfinished pine board. This is oak, and this is the Alder. And of course, the grain on the oak is slightly more pronounced than the alder, and the color is a little redder, but man, that is pretty similar. I don't know, maybe that sounds crazy to you, but at a fraction of the price, alder is kind of a poor man's oak, I think. Anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and hang this up in my office and put some awards on there, but before I do that, I'd really appreciate it if you would take just one minute to support the sponsor of this week's video, Casper, and Watch this rather artsy spot. It seems wherever I go these days, people are stopping me and asking me about my Casper mattress, whether I'm just chilling with my squad at Starbucks with a grande cafe Americano, or on a runway in Milan modeling Versace's latest fall fashions. Everyone, everyone wants to know if I'm still getting a great night's sleep on my award-winning Casper mattress with its supportive memory foam sleep surface that has just the right amount of spring and just the right amount of bounce. Yes, yes I am. But even long ago, back in a simpler time of fidget spinners and adpocalypse, strangers would stop me while dabbing on the dance floor and say, hey Steve, is it true that I can try a Casper mattress free for a hundred nights in my own home with free shipping? Yes. And they'd ask, is there anything else in the world other than a Casper mattress that's obsessively engineered and sold at a shockingly fair price? No. No, there isn't. So you better get with the program and go to casper.com slash WWMM and use promo code WWMM at checkout to save 50 bucks off your first mattress purchase. It's risk-free. The nice thing about using French cleats is I only have to level this one cleat and screw it into the wall. And since that cleat is shorter, I can drop this on and position it wherever I want. Well, I've got a long ways to go before I reach the limit of what this will hold, but this is really all about setting goals, so I could really make that as my next big goal to fill this up, at which time I'll need to make a new one. Thanks for watching, everybody.